Welcome to another super fun stuff. In this video, we go back to creating Crisis Protocol minis that don't suck. Last time we took the Red Skull mini and gave it a glowing Tesseract. The original mini was a pretty lackluster mini, but adding real glowing effects spiced things up. This time we look at Spider-Man. The Crisis Protocol Spider-Man sculpt is pretty blah. It shows Spider-Man squatting off an I-beam in a stupid looking rock. The Spider-Man model himself isn't half bad, we see him shooting his web at his enemy. But when you think Spider-Man, do you really think him slightly bent on the ground? Hell no. You think him swinging across the cities kicking bad guys butt. I guess the main problem with this mini is it just looks stupid and it's lackluster just like Red Skull. No Spider-Man vibe. But you do notice that his pose is very reminiscent of Spider-Man's swing, so I thought we can make this way better, but how? The Spider-Man mini itself is pretty small, thin arms, small features. But one good thing about this is that it makes him very light. So I thought, why can't we have him swing, and have him suspended in the air? There are a ton of games out there that have flying type models, but they always use those stupid clear plastic sticks. I never like them and always use wire instead. I think it looks cleaner and a little less bulky. So let's make Spider-Man look like he's swinging. Well, we have multiple problems. One, his base is 40 millimeters, so not a lot of room to work with. We need to decide what we're going to use to suspend him with, and his hand, which is only 3 millimeters thick, is very tiny. So what should we do to put Spider-Man in the air? Well, first we need to decide, do I pin him from the base or do I have him dangling from something? Well, since he's swing, dangling is the best option, but what to dangle from? The base is pretty tiny and I need to give him room for his body to swing from. If I have Spider-Man too close to an elevated item, then it won't have the same swinging effect. After a few hours of searching for models online, I found a lamppost. Since Spider-Man's in New York, a lamppost just makes sense but still doesn't answer how to have the mini away from the structure. So I have an idea and I decided to try an experiment. I put the model in mix mixer and sliced the bottom and angled it a little bit, maybe about 20 degrees or so. So it made the lamp post look crooked, kind of like it was pushed over falling down. After printing it, I found that the light post still didn't have enough room. So before curing the print, I slightly bend it. Since the light posts are metal, again, this made sense as well. I glue it on the base and add a few rocks around it to look like rubble. So I have my bent light post, but how does Spider-Man fit on it? I could have him on the very top, but that would just make him the same pose that we started off with, just higher up. So that's a definite no. But like I said before, Spider-Man is light. I had this very small gauge hobby wire lying around and thought maybe I could use it and fish it through his hand and make it look like he's holding onto his webbing. With his hand so small, I had to drill a one millimeter hole using the twist drill. I got the wire in his hand, glued it, and he looks pretty good. The benefit of using wire like this is it's somewhat rigid. I can bend it and place Spider-Man wherever I want. Plus the wire is just about the right scale to the mini. So I have my plan to decide to paint him up. Spider-Man is a really easy model to paint. I first slap primer on him using an airbrush. I then lay down my base colors. I start with the blue and go to the red. Here's what he looks like so far. Pretty awful looking. I add my base colors to the base as well and decide to glue Spider-Man on. Spider-Man doesn't really give you anything to hold on to, so I figured I would use the wire on the base to help me out. For the lamp post, I chopped off the top and glued wire in the middle. Look at Spider-Man bounce, it's kind of funny. Now to the washes. Spider-Man has a bunch of small details all over, so inking by hand is pretty hard, but washes work perfectly. I add a dark wash all over Spider-Man, and then I apply a strong wash all over the base. So far so good. The wash worked out, but it made him look like a mess. So now we have to clean them up. I take the same red I used before and touch them up on all the areas. It was actually quite easy to do it since Spider-Man outfit has a little squares all over. I go around and do the same thing for the blue. After that, I add simple highlights, orangey red for the red and lighter blues for the blue. Also add the black and the Spider-Man emblem and the rest of the trim. The base, I use this very simple dry brush. Last thing I do is I add a few pigments. I glue a small folded piece of plastic I cut from some packaging and that's about it. And here he is, super simple paint job, but adding a little pizzazz of him swinging from the light post. We took the original mini that was kind of lame and turned it into something I actually like. Here's him with Red Skull. How cool is that? Well, that's it for this video. I hope you like it and got some good ideas to make your own Spider-Man more interesting. Thank you to all my patrons, and thank you for watching.